Welcome back guys. We're going to be comparing what it's like to live in a house versus living in a uh, house. Well, one has wheels and one doesn't. Um, a building and a, and a car. So if you've seen my past video, you guys know that I was trying to get into real estate. Um, so I bought a property, but then the whole COVID thing happened and I needed to stay there. So after going through buying a house, furnishing it and living in one, I formed my own opinions about the pros and cons of living in a house and living in a car. I'm not in my property right now. Um, I'm actually at my cousin's house because I got really bored and alone because I didn't have a community where I was um, and there wasn't really much to do there. So I called up my cousin and my aunt and uncle asked them, hey, is it cool if I stay at your house for a little bit? Praise God for the culture and heritage that I have where we're very family oriented. And they said yes and actually encouraged me to come over and stay with them. And as I go through these pros and cons, I want everyone to remember, please take this video with a grain of salt. Um, everyone's life experiences are different. Everyone's situation is different. So um, what I talk about will be subjective. As well as considering the differences between living in a car versus a SUV versus a van and an apartment versus a small house versus a large house. It's not like one or the other. There is a s somewhat of a scale between your options that you decide to live in. And I want to give a shout out to who commented about my Aggie ring in my past video. I made sure to put it on. And also, if you haven't already done so, make sure you hit that like button. Um, it really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. That way, hopefully, this video can reach other people that it can help. And also, make sure you check out my Instagram. I'm starting to post more content on there. A little bit different content and bite-sized content um, for you guys to check out. So with that, we're going to be talking about these items right here somewhere in this area. All right and let's get started. So the first thing being space. This is an obvious one. You're just not gonna have as much space in a car as you would in a house. You have a lot more space for activities. You can stand, you have a lot more storage. However, I've noticed some people may have the urge to like fill up that space. So you have this open area and they think, oh man, maybe I should put like a drawer here or a table here to make sure my house doesn't feel empty. Or if you're like myself and you don't really mind having an empty space, um, sometimes people, like I think subconsciously, um, will start to hoard things. For an example, let's say you have a toaster and you want to go buy a new toaster that's better. And so you go out and you buy this new toaster and then you decide, you know what, this old toaster, I could probably give it to someone else or I could sell it or you know, I, I'll keep it just in case this new toaster breaks and for whatever reason you decide to keep it because you have the space to put it away. And after an hour, you totally forget about it. And that hour becomes a day, becomes a week, becomes a month, becomes a year, becomes multiple years. And then by the time like you decide to sell your house or move or something, um, or just decide to clean your house, you find this old toaster. And no longer is it this old toaster, but it's a bunch of different things. And on top of that, when you do have a lot more space, you do tend to be a little bit more disorganized because you could just start putting things here and there because you know like oh I'll just put it here for now I'll move it later and then you forget about it so when you live in a vehicle you definitely don't have that luxury of being able to move around like stand up or sit up especially if you live in a car or SUV versus a van um, you may be able to have a little bit more space in a van but in general you don't have as much space for activities and also you can't own a lot of things and you may have to let go of some or a lot of sentimental items of yours. But it does force you to detach yourself from material possessions and forces you to live small and only own the items that you really need or brings value to you. And because of that as well, you tend to have less of an urge to buy things or to have to impulse buy because you just know I can't put this anywhere. And so you gotta be very selective about what you buy and why you're buying things. Now moving on to the next thing is upfront costs. For a house, you'll have the down payment, closing costs, any repairs or renovations you want to do to the house, maybe replace the fence or add a fence, and then buying all the equipment and tools to do those things. Versus a car, you may have the down payment and then you do have to spend money on setting up your rig for living in it, which can vary from you know, not too much versus like seriously decked out high price, right? Like for mine, I think I paid no more than $400-ish uh, because it was very simple. It's just a bunch of wood stapled and glued together. But obviously if you want to like build in an AC unit or a nice refrigerator, um, toilet, shower, etc., if, if you live in a van, 
for all those things. It does bump up that upfront cost a lot. And you may also have to set up a gym membership if you live like in a car or an SUV and you have no access for a shower or toilet, etc. But in a general sense, you definitely should expect to pay less upfront costs for a car versus a house. And so from there, let's talk about maintenance. With a house with a lot more space, you have to do a lot more cleaning, um, and then you also have to pay for electricity, pay for water, pay for home internet, pay for TV services, paying for lawn care, or doing it yourself, which is time and effort there. And then any house repairs, like fixing a roof versus a car, you don't have as much space, so you don't need to clean very much. But you do increase your auto maintenance in terms of like changing out the fluids, like your oil, brake fluids, or transmission fluids, any type of fluids, um, your brakes as well, and increasing the amount of gas that your car uses, and possibly changing out your battery more often. And all because obviously you're living in your vehicle, so you're using it a lot more than the average person. And again, the maintenance for a car would probably be less than a house. But now let's talk about convenience. Like for a house, you're gonna have a shower, you're gonna have a kitchen, you're going to have a sink, you're gonna have a toilet, you have a larger bed, you're gonna have AC and heating, and you'll be able to host more people because you have those amenities to offer and have the space to have more people over. Versus living in a car where you probably will need a gym or an office or like a coffee shop where you hang out at to cover, you know, taking a shower, using the restroom, um, having somewhere with AC and heating, but it's not possible. You can definitely build out an AC or heating system in your vehicle. It's just gonna bump up that upfront cost a lot. And then of course, you can't have people over if you live in a car or an SUV, but it is possible to host, just limited um, if you live in a van. Though you are limited to how many people you can host, you can at least take them on trips and share your experiences with them, which is really awesome. And then on top of that, because you live in your car, you always have everything you need. So no matter where you go on your trips and you think to yourself, oh shoot, um, I wish I had this. This would be a lot of fun to do it here. Oh, I have it in my car. Let me just go grab it real quick. Versus living in a house where you do have to plan out what you're going to bring. And if you do think of something, um, it's just kind of like out of luck that you didn't bring it with you. And then the last thing being is the opportunities that you have for living in a house or living in a car. I definitely think you have a lot more opportunities living in your car than you do in your house because you can just get in your car and go anytime, anywhere, and for however long you wanna stay there. Like if you wanna to go to New York next week, shoot, just get in your car, go there, hang out there, work from a coffee shop, wherever, as long as your lifestyle allows it. Versus living in a house where you do have to find that time, set that time, then book a flight, then find lodging, and then because it's a set period of time, you have to schedule everything out and then on top of that, you have to pack and then unpack after your trip. So that's everything I wanted to cover in this video. I hope this helped you guys realize anything that you haven't considered before and will help you guys make a more informed decision. And let me know in the comments if I missed anything that you guys wanted me to talk about. And of course, make sure you hit that like button, make sure you subscribe for any new content and hit that notification bell for any new uploads. And lastly, make sure you check out that Instagram. All right guys, I'll see you guys next time.